Hi there. I'm so glad you're back with me here at Grandma Lee's house. As you can see, I've got my whiteboard and my dry erase markers with me. I thought it would be fun to draw a house on my whiteboard and maybe you can help think of different things that might go with my house. And in just a minute, I want to talk about different people who live in these houses and some of the different jobs they might have. So let's have fun with this. Have you ever drawn a house before? You know, houses look so many different ways, but when I was a little girl, there was one house I always loved to draw. And so I thought I would draw that one with you today. So I'm gonna start out with my black marker. It could be any color, but I only have four colors of my special markers today. So when I was much younger, when I would get ready to draw a house, I would usually start out with a square. So I'm going to do that first. So to make a square, and this won't be a perfect square, but that's okay. Sometimes when we're trying to draw something, our hands wiggle a little bit, and that's okay. So that's kind of a little bit of a crooked square, but that's okay. Maybe this is a crooked little house. Then I like to put a triangle shape on top for the roof. And then that little line right there is already there for my triangle. So I've got a square and a triangle. See how that looks kind of like a house? I think I'll change colors. Let me go with the red. What's something a house needs? Especially if you wanna get in the house, you have to have a door. So let's put our door right here. Well, I drew a really tall door, didn't I? And doors, in order to open them, you have to have a handle on your door. So I'm going to make a doorknob like this, okay, that you could grab and turn and open to get in this house. What else do you sometimes see on the fronts of houses? Let me give you a hint. Um, it's something that you could be able to look into the house, or if you were in the house, you could look out to see what's outside. Did you say windows? Yeah. So let's do some blue windows. I'm going to make some tall windows right here. I'll do one on this side and one on this side. Do you see what shapes these are? Those are kind of like rectangles. I didn't talk about that my door also looks like a tall rectangle. And I'm going to take some lines like this and I'm going to make some little, these are called window panes. All right, and now that looks a little bit more like windows. Let's see, what else could I put? Sometimes I see houses that have a window above the door, and I'm gonna make this one with that shape. Yeah, it's a circle shape, and I can still put in the window panes. Do you like this house so far? You know, you can draw your house any way you want to. So this is how I'm starting out. Now up here in the roof, I have also seen windows up there sometimes too. I'm gonna to go back to my blue. So I'm going to draw, let's see, I'll draw a window right up here. Maybe someone lives upstairs. You know, there are some houses that have a first floor and a second floor, and you can walk up some stairs inside the house to get to the second floor. My house, you can't do that, unless you're going up into the attic, but we don't live in the attic. Is there anything else my house needs? What do you think? I really love it when houses have chimneys. If I draw a chimney on top of this house, let me go back to the red. Do you know what that means is inside the house? If you have a chimney, and here's how, where I'm gonna draw it. 
it's going to be part of a rectangle. It's going to go kind of like that. There we go. You know, and if I did this, do you know what's coming out of that chimney? Some smoke. You're right, some smoke. And so that means on the inside of the house, there must be a fireplace. That's why there would be smoke coming out of the chimney. Now, something I like to do to my chimneys is I like to make it look like it's a brick chimney. So what I do is I draw a straight line like this, kind of like I was making the windows, but I do something like this and I make lots of little lines coming across like this. And now it kind of looks like a brick chimney, like there's it was made out of red bricks. All right, well, I really love the way that my house turned out. I love to be creative though. Is there anything that I could put around the house that would be interesting? When you think about your house or houses that are in neighborhoods, Many times they have what outside of the house? Do they have yards? Maybe bushes, flowers, trees maybe? It really depends on where you live. If you live in an apartment, when you step out of your house, you may see lots of other houses and then maybe a swimming pool. You know, some people have swimming pools where they live. That would be really cool if I had one. My granddaughters have a swimming pool where they live, and I think that's fantastic. Well, I don't have a green. I wish I did because I would love to draw some green bushes right here and maybe a green tree, but I can use my imagination, right? So I'm going to go back to my purple, and today we're going to have purple bushes, maybe purple flowers. So let's see, on this side of my house, I'm going to draw a big bush. And you know, sometimes bushes have little berries on them. So I'll just draw a little berry bush. I'm making little berries all over it. I have a holly bush at my house, and in the winter, you can see little red berries all over it. You can't eat them though. They're poisonous. They would make you sick, but they're really, really pretty. They're pretty to look at. And so sometimes when you see pretty berries on things, you need to always ask before you ever take them off. You don't ever want to eat berries that are poisonous. They can make you really sick. So you would have to ask mommy or daddy if it's okay. All right, so I've got my berry bush on this side. Let's see, on this side, I think I said flowers, right? So to draw a flower, I like to draw a stem, then I love to draw some leaves for the flower, and then up here I usually draw a little circle first, and then I draw petals like this, okay? It's kind of like drawing almost little ovals, an oval shape kind of, kind of like little egg shapes that go around. So there's one flower. That is a really big flower, isn't it? Maybe that's a sunflower. You know, sunflowers are yellow, but I don't have a yellow, so. I'll use my purple. All right, I think I'll draw another flower here right beside it, but I'm going to make it look a little different. Let's see, I'm going to put some other, maybe two sets of leaves for this one, but I'm going to make this one even taller. And on this one, it makes me think of flowers that I see sometimes in the spring here where I live. They're called blue bonnets, and they look kind of like that. Aren't those pretty flowers? I love it. Let's see, one more kind of flower I wanna do. Again, I'll put a stem. I'll make my leaves. Let's see if you can guess which kind of flower this is. Now this kind of flower, they have little pointy thorns on them, which I don't really like the thorns, but I love the flower. And it looks like this kind of. I start in the middle and I start to go around like this. See how I'm kind of going around? Can you see that? Then I'm going to make some little petals that come around it like this. And it's a pretty, these flowers can get pretty big. Do you know what the kind of flower that is? It's supposed to be a rose. 
It might not look exactly like a rose, but that's okay. When we're drawing, things don't always have to look exactly the way they look in real life. It's okay when you're drawing to pretend and be creative. All right, so let me pick a different color. Let me go to my blue and let's make some grass. Now, is grass usually blue? I don't know if grass is ever blue. I know that there is something called bluegrass. That's a little different though. That has to do with music. All right, um, but I'm going to make some grass. Now here's one way I make grass, just to make little marks like this. And sometimes the grass is tall like that. Sometimes it's short because when grass grows, some pieces grow taller than others. All right, so that's kind of cool. Um, can you think of anything else I could draw? I've got some space here. I've got some space here. We don't always have to fill it up. But today, I think I would like to put up in the sky. Did you say sunshine? That's one of my favorite things to draw up in the sky. I'm going to put a circle. And then I like to do these sun rays coming out. That makes it look like it's shining, doesn't it? And just for fun, I'm going to put a happy face on my son. <laughs> I like to do that too. Um, maybe over here where we've got the smoke. Now I'm going to draw a really pretty cloud right around the smoke. Here we go. And there's going to be a cloud behind the smoke. All right. And look, I can even draw two clouds that can be touching each other. So I just stop right there. It kind of makes it look like this cloud is behind the bigger cloud, doesn't it? So I think that's fun to do. Well, I think this picture is just about finished, don't you? There are, did somebody say birds? Okay, one more thing. These are kind of birds that look far away and I'm just gonna kind of draw them like that. See how it looks like there's kind of a bird flying up here in the clouds? Wow, here's one that's right in front of the cloud. That's kind of a fun way to make it look like there's birds far away flying up in the sky. So, all right, well, I think we're about done. Now, let's talk about different people who might live in this house and also the different jobs they might have, okay? So I wanted to show you six different houses I have and some of the things that are in this house for us to try to figure out who this is in the middle, who actually lives in this house. And then we're going to find that person and put that person in here. I'll show you that in just a minute. Let's look at my six houses and see what is inside the houses to give us a hint of who might live there. So in this house, you can see crayons, an artist palette for painting. There's an apron that someone would wear and here are a pair of scissors. That might be a clue as to the type of job the person who lives in this house has. So let me show you the other pictures. That's one. Here's another one. This one has a hammer, a measuring tape, a saw, and some protective glasses that would protect your eyes. Hmm. Are you getting an idea of who might live in that house? This one has a helmet, some kind of hose spraying water, an ax, and a fire hydrant. I think I know who lives in this house. Have you already figured it out? This one has a helmet that has a little microphone attached to it. These are tanks that hold air, like oxygen that we breathe. So I would call these oxygen tanks. When you're breathing right now, you're breathing in oxygen. This looks like the moon that we see at night. If you could really look at the moon up close, it would look like this. And here is a rocket ship. I know, you know the answer, don't you? You know who lives in that house. Okay, this house has 
a stethoscope that you would use to listen to someone's heart, where there are lungs, how they're breathing. Here is a coat. I think it's a lab coat. Oh, this looks like a mask. We've had to wear those before, haven't we? And this is called an x-ray. It's where we can see inside this little boy's body to see his bones. So that's an x-ray. Hmm, who do you think lives in that house? Last one. This one has, looks like a mixing bowl with a whisk that you would stir around. Here are some vegetables. Uh, here's some fruits. Wow, I see some yummy looking fruits. And this right here says cookbook. And it's got a little measuring cup and a spoon. It's someone who would need to be looking inside of a cookbook. All right. I have an idea about that one too. So now what I want to do is I want to show you some special people that might be living in these houses. And what's fun is they're kind of like a puzzle. Let me show you. This little box right here has the shape of the person living in each house. And if I open up this box, you can see that there's lots of little pieces. And I'm going to use this tray to put these pieces on the tray so that we can use the puzzle pieces to put together the people that live in the house. Now, these puzzle pieces also have words on the back, and we can look at those in a little bit if we want to. We might not have time to read all of them, but we want to look at the side that has the actual person on it and not the words this time. So that's how I'm gonna lay them out. All right, I've got all of the puzzle pieces laid out. I'm going to slide this piece back in so that we can begin to build our people that are gonna live in these houses I just showed you. So here's all of our pieces. And one of the things that you can do is look at the colors to help you build the pieces. So I'm going to start out with this bright pink color. See that pink in the background? All right, I'm gonna put that up here. That's where the head goes. And here's another pink piece. I'm gonna put that in the middle. And here's the last pink piece. When I put that here, there is my special puzzle person. Can you see what he's holding? It looks like he has a carrot in this hand and a spoon in this hand. Are you already thinking about which house he probably lives in? Did we see something that had vegetables and a spoon in it? We did, didn't we? Let me find that house. It's right here. And what job do you think this man has? He would be called a chef or a cook or a baker because he uses these things to create different foods and dishes that we love to eat. So I'm going to take him and I'm going to take him out. And by the way, on the back, it actually says, a chef is responsible for creating delicious meals and treats. So I'm gonna put that one here. I'll go ahead and read this one just for fun. There are many different kinds of chefs. If you really love sweet treats, you can be a pastry chef. That's really cool. That's where you would get to make things like cupcakes and pies and cookies. This says a person could study in the culinary arts to become a chef. There are people that go to school to learn how to cook in very special ways. So I've put that one in place. Let's see if I can hold this up without making all my pieces fall. Let's try it. Let me try it like this. Okay, and now he is in his house where he lives. And this guy is a chef. All right, so I'm gonna set that one aside. We figured out that one. Let's see if we can figure out the others. This time, I'm going to choose the pieces that look a little bit white in the background. See this piece? It's kind of a light tan color. So this piece would not fit up here in the head space, but it does belong right here in the middle. Let's see, here is the head. 
There we go. All right. And I'm going to say this is a woman this time. We had a man last time. We'll let the women have a turn. And so can you tell what she is? She has in her hand a clipboard where it looks like she's writing some notes. Do you see what's around her neck? She's got a stethoscope. We actually saw that, didn't we? And she actually has a special kind of little headband on her head, which probably has a light on it. We don't always see that when we go to visit our doctors, but I have actually seen where doctors have used a special light when they need to see like down into your throat. And so that helps them because inside your mouth, it's so dark. And sometimes they have to have a special light in order to see down in there to see if your throat looks sore and red. And that would tell her that you're sick. So, all right, so which house? I think we know, let me find it. Did you say this one? The one that had, uh, there's that stethoscope. And did you see that our doctor also had on the lab coat? Mm-hmm, yeah, there's the lab coat. Now, she wasn't wearing a mask, but if she had to do some kind of surgery where she was having to fix something inside your body, then she would definitely be wearing her mask then. And x-ray, if a person falls and gets hurt and they think maybe they've broken a bone, let's say in their arm, and let's say they break their wrist, well, one way to figure out if it's broken is to look at it with the x-ray. So a doctor definitely lives here. Now, when I first saw her, I wasn't sure if she was a people doctor or maybe an animal doctor. Animal doctors called veterinarians would have to dress this way too. But since we see a person getting an x-ray, I would guess that she's a people doctor. So let me put her in her house where she belongs. After she works a hard day helping people. You know, that's the thing I love um, about doctors is they are someone who really wants to help people. In fact, many, many jobs are there to help people. Like the chef that we just looked at, a chef helps provide meals or special treats for people who either want them or need them for something special like a wedding, a wedding cake. Mm -hmm. And a people doctor is helping people every day, trying to figure out if they're sick and what kind of sickness they have, or maybe they're just checking you to make sure that you are growing right and growing well and healthy, and they're just checking on you. And sometimes they might recommend that you get a certain shot called a vaccination to keep you safe from certain diseases. That happens too sometimes. So doctors are very helpful. All right, y'all are doing good. Let's go to the next one. Let's find the dark blue pictures. Can you see my pictures? I'll try to move them where you can see them all. All right, so you see this dark blue right here of... I don't want to give it away. I almost said their job name. Here's the middle one. Now you have to be careful because it could fit upside down, but that looks a little strange, don't you think? <laughs> so I think we better turn it this way. There, that looks right. And here are the feet. So what kind of job does this person have? Did you say astronaut? Then you're right. An astronaut. An astronaut can be a woman or a man. In fact, any of these jobs we're talking about today can be a man or a woman. I'm going to let this be a woman again because I think it would be pretty cool to be an astronaut, don't you? So let's see, can you think of a house that the astronaut probably lived in? Do you remember? Oh yeah, the one that had the space helmet. There was one that had this face helmet, wasn't there? Let me look for that house. There it is. There's that space helmet. And that's really important because once you leave the earth and you go up into outer space, you can't just walk around or move around the way we do on the earth. 
it's a different atmosphere. The air is different in outer space. Yeah, you've got to wear this special helmet because that's where the oxygen from the oxygen tanks that you have to wear maybe on your back sometimes. There's different ways to get the oxygen, but that this is one of the ways. And it's going to need to come up inside your helmet so that you can breathe, you know? Have you ever gone under the water in a swimming pool? What do you have to do before you go underwater? Do you have to go <gasps> and get some good air in your lungs and in your mouth? Yes, because you have to have oxygen to breathe. Well, an astronaut also needs oxygen because once they go into outer space, the oxygen isn't there for them to breathe the way we breathe it on Earth. This astronaut may have gone to the moon or maybe wants to go to the moon and maybe she is going to get there in a rocket ship. You gotta have a very special kind of rocket to make it all the way to the moon. It's very, very far away. So let's get our astronaut in her house. Here we go. Yeah, and I know I didn't read the last one. I think it might take us a little too long to read all of them, but I'm going to take time to read this one. See this? An astronaut's job is to operate a spacecraft, like a satellite, rover, or spaceship, through outer space. Okay, the middle piece. Astronauts can have a variety of duties aboard a spacecraft, like being a pilot, or even collecting samples from other planets or the moon. Wouldn't it be cool to go to the moon and actually pick up a moon rock and bring it back? Wouldn't that be awesome? This says, did you know the word astronaut means star sailor in Greek? A sailor is someone who would actually travel on a boat. So they're calling an astronaut someone who sails or travels among the stars, a star sailor. I like that. All right, here we go. There's our astronaut in her house. All right, let's move on. We don't have many left. All right, I've got another one that has blue on it. It's a little bit lighter blue. So see that blue in the background? There's a head. Now you tell me, is this, did I put this on correctly? No, that looks kind of goofy, doesn't it? All right, let me turn it that way. Oh my goodness, I see some hints already. Yeah, we saw a house that had a particular kind of helmet in it. I remember that. And I remember seeing an ax as well. Who is this guy? He is a firefighter. Wow, that's an important job. Do they help people? Absolutely. If a house or a building catches on fire, they want to help get those people out as quickly as possible and then try to put out the fire as quickly as possible. So there was a house that had an ax, wasn't there? Here it is. All right, there's that ax. And firefighters have to use axes sometimes to maybe break a window. If someone was stuck in a room, they might have to break the window so that they could get the people out, all right? And there's the fire hose to spray the water on the fire. That important helmet is so important because it's hard and it protects the head. So if a piece of wood or something comes crashing down and it's on fire, that can help protect the firefighter's head. And this is a fire hydrant. This is where they turn a special kind of knob and they attach the uh, fire hose to it and water comes out. Yeah, water comes out to spray. So let's get our firefighter in his house. There we go. There he is. Great job. Just two more houses left. So that means two more people are left. Let's put together the ones that have the gray background. See that? This is kind of a, whoops, kind of a gray color. Okay, you tell me if I put this on correctly or not. Is that the right way? 
Yeah, it is, isn't it? Okay, one more piece. I have to be careful. Let's see, I see some feet on this one, but I don't think that's the right feet. Do you? It's not the right color. Let's see, right here. Okay, let's see. This looks like a guy to me. He's wearing a, some kind of hat. I do see a hammer. Oh, I think we saw a hammer, didn't we? He's wearing a special kind of uh, tool belt, it looks like to me. Actually, I think that may be some kind of vest, actually, with the belt attached to it. So, hmm, what do you think his job is? He definitely uses the hammer to build something, right? Mm -hmm. That's usually what we're using hammers for, to drive in nails. Did you say, let's see what our picture says it is, if I turn it over. This calls him a construction worker. Construction workers are responsible for building and fixing homes, buildings, bridges, roads, and so much more. In fact, you have to have a construction worker to build a house. Maybe he built his own house? Who knows? All right. Well, we did see a hammer in one of our houses. Here it is. A hammer, a measuring tape. You have to use that to measure things before you build them. A saw to help cut pieces of wood, and those safety glasses are really important. When you're working around things that you're cutting and hammering, sometimes little pieces of wood can fly off if you're cutting them, and a little piece of wood you don't wanna get in your eye, you wanna protect your eyes. So you wear these special kind of safety glasses or safety goggles, kind of like swimming goggles, but these are just used for people who are protecting their eyes when they're doing some kind of work, okay? And let's get our construction worker in his house. After a long day of work, he's probably ready to take a rest. Their job is really hard, physically, physically hard. All, all jobs are hard at some point, but his job, he's gotta work hard and that can wear you out. You gotta rest. So look at him, there he is in his house. Are construction workers helpful for others? Absolutely. That's the reason why I live in this house right here, because a construction worker helped build it. And wherever you live, probably a construction worker helped build your house too, unless you built it yourself. Have you ever made a pretend place to live? Like maybe you took a little table and put a blanket over it and you made your own pretend little house to live in? Maybe you were being a construction worker. All right, I think we have one person left. Here's the hat. Ooh, this is purple. But look, there's only, can you see them? There's only three pieces left. So I should get this one right. Okay, so there's the head. There is the middle piece. No, that doesn't look right. Yeah, that looks right. And there's the feet. See that? What is she? What does she do for her job, do you think? Did you say a painter, maybe? Look what she has in her hand. I see a paintbrush and a pencil. And then there's an apron where there's little splashes of paint, it looks like, on it. Yeah, I would probably call this person an artist. A person who their job is to create art is called an artist. Let's see if that's what they called her. Let's just check and see. We were right. An artist is a person who makes creations using self-expression and creativity. Yeah. Do you like to make things? Do you like to be creative? When I was drawing my house earlier, I was being creative. And if I drew pictures and sold them and people bought them, I could say I was an artist, right? So maybe you like to draw, maybe you like to color, maybe you like to cut out and create things. You are becoming 
an artist. And not all artists have to get paid for a job. You can be an artist just for fun too, can't you? So was there a house for the artist? Yes, this one right here. The one where we saw the crayons and the paint and paintbrush. There's that artist apron that they wear to protect their clothes. And there's some scissors so that they can cut out and create things. I know a little girl who recently took some tissue, kind of like either toilet paper or paper towel, something like that, some tissue, and made a hula skirt for her doggy. I know who that little girl is, right? <laughs> so let's put our artist in her house. And there she is, all happy in her house, ready to make lots of creative things. That's one of my favorite things to do, is to make creative things. So, that's all the houses I have. We got all of our people in their houses, and now in their houses, they can continue to do things to help others, or maybe to rest. You know, after a long day's work, God made our bodies to need some rest. So hopefully they're going to get to do that too. Well, you know what would be really fun would be if I now was creative and took my markers or crayons and I colored their houses. Well, that would be fun too. Okay. Well, thank you so much for helping me figure out about who lived in each of these houses and the special jobs that they have to help others. How did the artist help others, you say? Did you know that when someone draws me a picture and they send it to me, that helps my heart feel so special. My granddaughters did that. They made some little cupcakes not too long ago for my birthday out of paper and they glued things on their cupcakes. So that helped me really feel celebrated for my birthday. Mwah. Thank you, sweet girls, for doing that. All right. Well, thank you again for helping me. I hope you'll be creative. Maybe you can draw a house and draw somebody in your house with all the special tools that they use to do their job. You can have fun with it. You could even build a house out of blocks and think about the kind of person you want to live in your house. Maybe you can take a doll and create something for that doll so that they can be an artist. Maybe you can make them a little paintbrush or maybe you can take one of your dolls and they're the firefighter and you decide to make a little hose for them to hold in their hand. There's so many different ways to have fun and be creative. I hope you'll do that at your house. And I'm so thankful for who God made you to be. One day, when you grow up, you'll have a special job, maybe one of the jobs we talked about today, or maybe a hundred other things that you might could do. But whatever you do, just remember that it's who God made you, the masterpiece that you are, that is the most important. God loves you and he has a purpose for you. So keep listening to him and his truth about you and who you are. Love you so much. I gotta go. See you next time. Bye. There's my great big hug. Couldn't forget that. Bye.